Hello, welcome to the Daily News Ukraine channel. Today is January 23rd and our daily review of news about Ukraine. The Russian forces opened fire 111 times on populated areas of Zaporizhia region over the past day, January 22nd. That's according to Alexander Sterik, head of the Zaporizhia Regional Military Administration, who reported the news on Telegram, Ukraine Form reports. Our communities are suffering from active enemy fire, 111 shellings over the past day, 88 of them targeting civilian objects. 41 buildings were destroyed, one person was injured. The enemy struck the Huliapol, Orakiv, and Stepnohursk communities, said the administration chief. Read also, for civilians injured in Russia's shelling of Donetsk region according to the official, work is ongoing in the village of Lezine, which the Russians attacked with S-300 missiles yesterday, power networks and the local road have already been restored. As Ukraine Form reported, on the night of January 22, Russian troops launched a missile attack on two villages in Zaporizhia region. The Bundeswehr began on Monday, January 23, the transfer of the first two of three squadrons of Patriot anti-aircraft missile systems to Poland. The Weld TV channel broadcast the start of the convoy movement from the town of Noyan in mecklenburg vorpommern Ukraine Form reports. Anti-aircraft systems are to deploy to operational positions in the area of the city of Zamosk in southeastern Poland, which is approximately 60 kilometers from the Ukrainian border and 110 kilometers from the Ukrainian city of Lviv. It should be noted that next to the deployment site is an important railway transshipment station for civilian and military cargo bound for Ukraine. The convoy of vehicles from Germany is to cover 1,100 kilometers. Read also, Netherlands to provide two Patriot launchers to Ukraine Bundeswehr soldiers have been in place in Poland since January 16 to ensure the installation of weapons system components together with Polish alliance partners. The units are integrated into the NATO airspace defense system on the eastern flank. The purpose of the move, as explained in the Bundeswehr, is to protect the airspace of Poland and strengthen NATO's eastern flank. The Patriot battery consists of a fire control vehicle, surveillance and fire control radar, electric generators, and an air defense missile carrier equipped with 4 to 16 interceptor missiles. As reported, Germany offered Poland Patriot air defense systems after two men in Poland were killed by missile debris during a massive Russian air attack on Ukraine last November. In Donetsk region, soldiers of the State Border Guard Service of Ukraine captured the position of the Russian invaders near Bakhmut with the help of mortar fire. This was reported by the State Border Guard Service, according to Ukraine Form. Servicemen of the State Border Guard Service, our Bakhmut defenders, actively use heavy weapons for defense and counterattacks near the fortress city. Yesterday, one of the Border Guard units, which recently withstood a series of enemy assaults, moved forward and captured the position of the occupiers, the statement reads. It is noted that fire support for the counteroffensive was provided by mortars manned by the border guard's combat groups. Under powerful fire, the Russian invaders left their defense line and fled. Read also, Yermak, Ukraine needs hundreds of tanks, not 10 or 20 the border guards cleared the area and are now holding their ground. Enemy losses are being verified. As Ukraine Form reported earlier, according to intelligence forecasts, active fighting will continue in Donetsk and Luhansk regions for the next two months. Photo, State Border Guard Service of Ukraine Ukraine needs several hundred tanks to win, because without Ukraine's victory, there will be no stable development and a clear world order. This was stated by the head of the president's office Andriy Yermak on Telegram, Ukraine Form reports. We need tanks, not 10 or 20, but several hundred. Our goal is the borders of 1991 and accountability for the enemy who will pay for the crimes committed, he emphasized. Yermak recalled that the common goal of democracy in the fight against autocracy is to ensure stable development and a clear world order. According to him, none of this will happen without Ukraine's victory. Read also, Yermak. It's impossible to press on Ukraine in Crimea and Donbass issues, that's why today every tank capable of being used in combat must be on our front. Because this is not only the Ukrainian front. 
This is the front of civilization against backwardness and barbarism coming from the swamps, the president's office chief emphasized. As reported, President Volodymyr Zelensky said that the supply of dozens of Western tanks to Ukraine against the thousands of tanks available to the Russian army will not solve the problem, but will help motivate the Ukrainian military. January 23, at 1400 hours, a briefing is held on the topic, consequences of the shelling of Kherson and populated areas of the region. Organizer, Media Center Ukraine, Ukraine Forum. Speaker, Yuri Sobolevsky, first deputy chairman of the Kherson Regional Council, online. Current issues, consequences of the shelling of Kherson and populated areas of the region, how the large-scale medical evacuation from Kherson took place, critical infrastructure situation, how Kherson lives after deoccupation. This is an offline event, Hall 1, plus online inclusion. Watch on Ukraine Forms YouTube channel. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia summoned the ambassador of Estonia in Moscow, Margus Lydre, and informed him of the downgrading of the diplomatic representation in both countries to a temporary charged affair and ordered him to lead the Russian Federation by February 7. This is reported by Ukraineform with reference to MFA Russia's Telegram channel. The ambassador was also informed of strong protest in connection with the actions of the Estonian authorities. Moscow accuses Estonia of targeted destruction of the entire complex of relations with Russia, total Russophobia, cultivation of enmity. Such actions and definitions were used by the Russian Foreign Ministry due to Estonia's recent decision to reduce the size of the Russian embassy in Tallinn. Read also, the Tallinn Pledge, Britain and ADU countries promise tanks, heavy artillery to Ukraine as reported by Ukraineform on January 11, the Estonian Foreign Ministry informed the Russian ambassador about the decision, according to which Russia shall reduce the number of employees of its embassy in Tallinn to eight diplomats and 15 seconded administrative, technical, and service staff by February 1, 2023. The purpose of this is to achieve parity or equivalence in the number of positions in the embassy, as a result of which the number of available positions in the Russian and Estonian missions operating in the capitals will be equalized. According to the Estonian side, in the conditions of Russia's aggressive war against Ukraine, the current size of the Russian representation is not justified. Currently, the Russian embassy in Tallinn employs 21 diplomats and 23 staffers without diplomatic status. At 1300 hours, a briefing is held on the educational process in 2023 and the enrollment campaign. On January 23 at 1 p.m. briefing on the topic, beginning of studies in 2023, what will the second semester be like, continuation of studies in June. Organizer, Media Center Ukraine, Ukraine Forum. Speaker, Andrei Vitrenko, First Deputy Minister of Education of Ukraine, online. Main topics, start of studies in 2023, second semester, continued studies in June. Enrollment campaign, state final attestation for four grades. This is an offline event, Hall 1, plus online inclusion. Watch on Ukraineform's YouTube channel. Ambassador of Ukraine to the EU Vsevolod Chensov predicts that the European Union will find a way to overcome Hungary's blocking of the allocation of 500 million euros in military aid to Ukraine. The diplomat expressed this opinion in an interview with the European Pravda online newspaper, Ukraineform reports. Chensov noted that this is not the first time that Hungary is blocking aid to Ukraine. According to him, it has already become a kind of bad uninteresting game on the Hungarian part. If we recall what happened with the decision to allocate macrofinancial support for this year, it is not the first time that EU member states were able to develop a preventive tool so that this decision would be adopted in any case if Hungary followed through and vetoed it. I hope that a positive decision will be made based on the outcome of this meeting, of the EU Council of Ministers edition, the ambassador said. Read also, Hungary holding Ukraine hostage in its fight for EU money, Kaleba he noted that Hungary, like all EU member states, tries to protect its interests, but quite often it tries to do so at the expense of others, including Ukraine. Ukraine is becoming a hostage of these difficult situations within the EU. So they, Hungarians. Edition, can try to block anything. 
do they have the opportunity to do so? It's always a balance. If you cross certain red lines, you are no longer reckoned with, and you find yourself in isolation, Chentsov believes. As reported earlier, Hungary has blocked the allocation of the seventh tranche of 500 million euros from the European Peace Fund to Ukraine, which is intended for military aid. As of the morning of January 23, due to the decrease in temperature, electricity shortage in Ukraine's power system has increased, while consumption limits have already been exceeded in five regions. That's according to NEC Ukrainergo, the state-owned system operator, Ukrainform reports. Electricity consumption is higher than on Sunday, which is due to the start of the working week, as well as a gradual decrease in temperature throughout Ukraine. In this connection, the capacity deficit has increased. Already in the morning, the caps were exceeded in five regions, Kharkiv, Dnipropetrovsk, Zaporizhia, Volyn, and Lviv, where emergency shutdowns are currently in effect, which are also possible in other regions, the statement says. It is noted that consumption caps for the whole day have been established for all regional distribution companies. In particular, each such company shall draw up schedules of planned hourly blackouts, which must ensure that consumption in the region does not break the established limit. Read also, Zelensky, post-war Ukrainian education must be competitive, the company also reported that it managed to restore one of the damaged 330 kV lines in the southeast of the country. As a result of Russian missile and drone attacks, power plants, generating capacities, and the high-voltage network were damaged. The latest Russian attack on January 14 inflicted significant damage on several power units of thermal power plants. Electricity generation at operating power plants cannot fully cover consumption, the energy company added. Active hostilities are expected to last in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions within the next two months. The relevant statement was made by deputy head of the main intelligence directorate at the Ukrainian Defense Ministry Vadim Skibitsky in an interview with Ukrainform, commenting on Putin's order to seize the Donetsk and Luhansk regions before March 2023. Indeed, in February-March, active hostilities will be underway, namely in the Luhansk and Donetsk regions, Skibitsky said, noting that Russia's chief of general staff and the newly appointed commander of Russian forces in Ukraine, Valery Gerasimov, failed to complete the task set before him, namely to seize the Donetsk and Luhansk regions completely. According to the Ukrainian intelligence, the second mechanized division of the first tank army is being redeployed from Belarus. Thus, a new attempt by Russian invaders to cross Ukraine's state border in the Kupiansk direction cannot be ruled out. Today we were talking about those news. Russians shell Zaporizhia region over 100 times in past day. Germany starts sending Patriot systems to Poland. Border guards capture enemy position near Bakhmut. Yermak, Ukraine needs hundreds of tanks, not 10 or 20. Briefing Consequences of Russian shelling of Kherson and region. MFA Russia lowers level of diplomatic relations with Estonia, expels ambassador. Briefing, educational process in 2023 and the enrollment campaign. EU could bypass Hungary's blocking of 500 million euros in military aid to Ukraine envoy. As power deficit in energy system increases, consumption caps breached in five regions. Intelligence expects active hostilities in eastern Ukraine within next two months.